I'd been having some trouble physically, uh, but nothing that I ever imagined would end up being ALS. Uh, the day of diagnosis, I had a test and came out with results right then and there. And it turns out that was my last day of work. I was a, an art therapist at the Canadian Mental Health Association, working with individuals with mental health and substance use issues. Uh, very proud of the work that I did. And I had to stop working um, due to both the mental uh, fatigue of, of having a diagnosis like this, as well as the physical. It takes a real toll on your body. Um, I've been losing control of my muscles. Um, you know, things like holding tea, I, I, I'm shaking, I can't carry things anymore, um, I'm having trouble walking, I can't more, walk more than a block. Um, at the time, we owned our first condo, my husband, Travis, and myself, and we had to sell the condo because it had stairs and I can't do stairs anymore. Um, so I lost my job, I lost my home, um, and a lot of fear came with that. At the same time, I have had a chance to reflect on how lucky that I've been, and, and I feel like I've led many different lives. So it's kind of, you know, two extremes of awful and hopeful. Why was it important for you to mm -hmm. kind of step forward and be kind of the public face a little bit for, for the illness? Yeah. It was such a privilege and an honor to have been asked. Um, your goals and your direction and your meaning and your purpose in life when you're given a diagnosis of a terminal illness gets taken away. And I felt that I'd been very selfish. I need to live for myself now and you know, do the traveling and take care of myself at the same time something was missing. And in some small way, this allows me to give back and give a face to this illness that was not very well known, that has gained recognition worldwide, but there's still a ways to go.